Our Suburban Brett is a really fun strain that was uh, brought to us by a friend. Um, and uh, we've gone from experimenting and trying it out to now it's a, a standard production. You would not believe how many people uh, are using Brett on a regular basis, which I'm psyched about. I love Brett beers. Um, so this Suburban Brett is really interesting from a t production standpoint because Bretts, generally speaking, grow really slow. Um, you put them in a tank and they propagate slowly, they grow slowly, they're slow to start, they're slow to attenuate, they're slow to flock out, they're just slow in everything they do. The Suburban Brett is a, a, a relatively, compared to all the other Bretts, a racehorse, super fast. It grows almost as fast as a Saccharomyces. Um, we did get it genotyped, we know it's a Brett, we know it's not a Saccharomyces variant <laughs> by accident. Uh, and. Um, in the early couple of days, when it just starts growing, it stinks. It smells like rotting vegetables. It's gross. Um, but by the time it's finishing attenuation and its last two, one or two Play-Doh of attenuation, it starts kicking out these amazing uh, pineapple, mango, uh, papaya, guava notes that are just, they fill the entire room. Um, uh, when somebody is harvesting suburban bread, you can walk into the room and you can smell it. Before you even see them doing it, you're like, oh. Suburbans in the air, and it makes beers that taste that way. Uh, it kicks off just these huge, juicy, tropical, but pretty as, um, acidic notes. Uh, so they're they're sharp. There's some pungency to it. Um, so that's a really fun Brett. Uh, it's fun to grow. It's fun to drink, uh, and it's probably really fun to brew with. I'll find out one of these days. Um, works awesome in primary and in secondary. One strain that's really taken off for us in a big way lately is uh, A38 Juice. Uh, it's an English ale strain that sort of flew under the radar for a long time. Uh, I used to brew with it as a house ale strain uh, for years and got to know it really well. Super versatile, uh, great for ESBs, works well in stouts, awesome for IPAs, but now people have discovered it is like the yeast for hazies, um, for making uh, Northeast style IPAs, and people just love it. The awesome thing about having juice go all over the place to make these Northeast IPAs right now is having it proliferate everywhere, people will discover what a versatile strain it is and what an awesome house ale strain it is and be able to use it in so many other styles of beer once the hazy thing comes and goes, which, uh, you know, who knows when that'll happen. Well, so the, the blend of dry hop is uh, pretty unique. Uh, that one's fun because the um, uh, A20 Citrus uh, is a re has a really particular flavor profile that I find to be uh, the pithy side of citrus. So it's kind of sharp, it's a little bit assertive on the palate. Um, the Barbarian produces uh, really bright, peachy, juicy esters, uh, almost too soft and sweet. So you mesh, you mesh the two together, you get the soft, juicy, peachy side, um, the sweet side from Barbarian, and then you get the kind of like sharp, pithy side from Citrus. You blend those together and you get just an awesome flavor profile, um, which I don't think you could achieve with either strain independently. Um, uh, the tough one about that is if people are repropagating it, eventually one or the two will take over and just uh, start to outnumber the other. So it's a tough one to do on an ongoing basis.